Well, hello. This is Cheryl Lentz, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, talking to you on Tuesday at 2. I am so excited today. Guess what? I am clapping like a seal. That's, that is not an attractive look. I'm sorry. Um, I am so excited today because everyone, you know, I've been showing uh, our new embossing cutting machine, and everyone can order it today. Not only can you order the machine, and you can order extra plates if you'd like, but you can also order the self-healing magnetic sheet. I am so pumped about getting that. Hi, Cindy. Woohoo! Waving to you, Cindy. Hello, hello. So, so excited about that. So, two different, two things I'm really excited about. First of all, that y'all can get that cutting, embossing cutting machine. Also, we have, so the cutting machine is, the embossing cutting machine is $120. Okay. But let me preface it by saying we have a new special. So if you want to join my stamping family, for $99, you get $125 worth of product. Hello, Terry. You get $125 worth of product. Plus, they have a new little special. And I'll show you when I turn the uh, camera around. They have a new special where it's, it's called Get and Go, a starter promotion kit where you're going to get some Granny Apple Green cardstock cut and ready to go, Coastal Cabana cardstock cut and ready to go, and you get the Queen Anne's, um, Queen Anne's Lace stamp set, you get So Much Love stamp set, and basic rhinestones. All that is free on top of the $99. So for $99, you get $125 worth of product, which could be your $120 embossing cutting machine, and um, you would get... Um, and it's and also on top of that it's free shipping so something else to keep in mind such a deal okay really excited about that I'm gonna turn the camera around today we're gonna do a class so I had um, oh good sharing with one of my oh very good welcome Cindy's friend <laughs> you must be fun Cindy's fun <laughs> I um, today I had um, we're gonna do one of my classes so it'll be just like joining a class this, these were the cards that we did on my Sassy Saturday class. Um, and I'm, so there'll be four cards. I have some extra setups on these cards. So I will show you what a setup is. And if you would like to purchase that, um, I am running a special this week. So it'll be $15 for the setup for the four cards and $3.95 for shipping. And I'll ship it out to you. So let me know if you're interested. We'll go ahead. I'm going to show you the special on the, I have an itchy nose. What does that mean? Kiss a fool. I, mm, I guess, I don't know if I did that this morning. Um, I have, uh, I'll show you the special on the, that, and then we'll get started stamping. So I haven't stamped, really stamp, stamp with y'all for a bit. So I hope you enjoy this. So I'm going to turn the camera around. There we go. Got my button pushed. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, good, Cindy. I'm glad you're sharing on a day I'm really stamping. You know what? We've had some some crazy days lately. Hello, Debbie. Welcome, welcome. We've had some crazy days where I haven't um, I haven't really stamped. Okay, here's the Get and Go Starter Kit. So you get all this extra stuff. If you don't know what Queen Anne's Lace, we've used this in class. This is the Queen Anne's Lace stamp set. And I do not have this one. But this is, on top, is the So Much Love stamp set. Well, hello, Travis J. Lentz. Um, so it's the So Much Love stamp set. Very nice with these nice flowers. Wonderful for coloring with our blends. So all that additional is free with your $99 um, starter kit. Pretty darn exciting. Okay, let's get stamping. So when you come to class, you get a packet like this. In this packet are all four cards that you're going to make and everything is is tucked in its own little envelope so for instance this is let's see here I'm gonna get this one out so this card is that we're gonna stamp so I pull this out everything that is on the front of the card is in the front everything that goes inside the card is inside the card so no mistaking where you're where you're headed to. So I'm going to get started on this card. And instead of showing you right away, I'm going to show you as we go along. So when I was doing this card, if you're a Packer fan, this is Packer Green and Gold. 
if you're not a Packer fan, which is the football team here in Wisconsin, uh, this is Bumblebee and, and Shaded Spruce. <laughs> so, and I use two different um, designer papers on here. So on this card, I'm gonna go ahead and do my stamping so that can dry, and then we'll put everything together. So I'm using the Game On stamp set, which we've used quite a bit. Love this um, stamp set. Great set for this. Oops, come on now, everybody cooperate. Here we go. So I'm using Shaded Spruce, my favorite green, Shaded Spruce um, ink. And I'm just gonna, this is a kind of a big stamp, so I'm gonna stamp it like this. Okay, and this is going to get cut out fussy cut not a big deal so I'm gonna stamp it once there and then I'm gonna stamp it once in the inside so on the second stamp it'll be a little bit lighter and I want that on the inside corner of my um, card here so I'm just gonna stamp it once more ta-da so you just have kind of a little hint so in class after you're done you would want to clean your stamp and then right now I'm using baby wipes here just for it's faster for me. So you want to clean that up so the next stamper in line doesn't get a green hand. <laughs> so on the inside, I'm going to go ahead and just stamp the verse, then the whole inside would be done. It says, hope your day is all fun and games. Let's see here. Let's go that. There we go. Clean it off. Put it back in my bucket. So the inside is all ready to be put together. Now, on the front, I have, I wanted this part, I wanted It's Your Day, not the roll with it, because we're doing cards, not dice. So, I took my marker, my Shaded Spruce marker, and I started where I want to end, and I just go with the side of the marker on my stamp. I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to stamp it right here towards the bottom. So I have plenty of room on here. There we go. Clean off the stamp. Put it back in my bucket. And then I'm all done with this ink. So I can put this away before I wear it. There we go. And I am going to take this piece here. It's your day. And I'm going to punch it out with our classic label punch. So. I'm gonna put this in, just kind of center it. I, I do a lot of working from the bottom, right? Let me make sure I have it centered. Boop, there we go, okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I have a piece of the Bumblebee cardstock cut, just slightly larger, because I wanted this to be a layer. I'm a layerer. I like to layer everything and have it uh, stand out a little bit more. I'm also throwing things around here. I don't know what, what's up with that. So there we go. So I'm going to center this on this paper here. Oh boy, that is not centered. Come on, Cheryl. There. I'm trying not to get my head in the camera. So there. Okay, that's a little better. Ta-da. Okay, now I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm just gonna snip along the edge to mimic the cut here from my punch. There we go, and then I have a perfect layer. Ta-da! Sometimes with the bigger punches, we'll like cut another punch, you know, punch another one, and then cut it in half and do some fancy stuff. But with this little one, that's all you needed was that. And then I'm going to cut this out so this doesn't take that long, kinda and they're all nice smooth lines. So when you're cutting out, you can decide. Generally, when we punch everything out, we have a little bit of a white outline. So you can decide if you want it to look like you punched it out or used a die. Might have a little bit of a white border or you can cut it right on the line. I'm cutting it just above the line and leaving a little bit of the white showing. And it would depend on you know the color of the background too. Um, if you wanna have it uh, stand out more or I'm snipping all this stuff away um, you know uh, like if I was putting this on a green background the I would probably want a little more white showing so that it would stand out more 
so I'm just cutting this almost done here and you you turn the paper not the scissors right so I'm just moving the paper along and cutting it out there we go okay assembly time ding 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 okay so now I am going to show you one other little trick I have so on this I never know where I'm gonna go when I start designing I pull out like the basic pieces and then I put them together and then I decide you know this is gonna be covered up or whatever well on this particular piece I decided I wanted a little bit of this wood grain bumblebee um, to stick out like that but instead of cutting those little pieces that's hard to glue down and hard to handle I cut it a little bit bigger I'm going to put my adhesive just on this very edge this piece is going to line up with the lines on my grid paper and this is how I get it even and I'm going to line up with this line here on my grid paper so if I start at the top put my paper down parts uh, the designer paper there we go and I'm just lining up on that grid line so that I know that this piece is the same um, uh, size right all the way down okay now I'm going to glue this piece onto my white cardstock this is my layer but because I'm working white on white sometimes that's hard to see so I'm gonna just lay it here you know I always put everything sideways when I'm working it with stuff and I'm gonna add my adhesive here yay green glue okay and then I can see exactly where the edges are. So I'm going up to the top of the white and at the bottom here. My green glue gives me a little bit of wiggle room, but I can see exactly where I'm going instead of working white on white. There we go. And then this piece just gets glued onto the front layer. The base of the cardstock is going to be shaded spruce. And that's what I used this is the shaded spruce designer paper this is both of these are from the six by six so the shaded spruce um, would be in the regal pack and the bumblebee would be in the new in color pack so there we go here's the base of my card beautiful deep color i love shaded spruce i'm going to just glue this right on here like that so Packer colors or just green and gold <laughs> all right I have some die cut circles here from our um, shapes so they're the stitched shapes and I did two circles one in the green one in the white and on this one I'm going to add dimensionals so I'm going to put I don't know maybe four or five dimensionals on here I want to make sure that it's this baby is not gonna move. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the front of my card. Throw my little pieces here on the floor for the sweeper, which is me. Let's see here, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this on like that. Ta-da, okay. Now, my cards are gonna go up here so they're gonna go just like that, but I wanted to pop those up too. So I'm gonna use some more dimensionals and get that popped up here. I think these are so cute. I really, I love this stamp set. I mean, it's, um, this is like, I've been trying to do more man cards and not that it's just for a guy that, you know, obviously, but, um, but it is more masculine than you know say a floral card <laughs> so there we go so this one I just kind of centered here it almost goes kind of edge to edge with the green there we go just like that Ta -da. and my little it's your day is going to just glue on underneath here so a little more adhesive put that on and it sort of the point to point goes again from the to the circle there we go and I added some of our little glimmer um, the glimmer uh, embellishments so let me pull those out 
Get my little pickup tool. Where are you? Here you are. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put one here. Come back here. Little, little diamond. Okay, we'll put one here. And we're going to put a smaller one over next to it. I always generally, I hate to say always, I always do this. I always do that. Generally, I work in odd numbers, right? So I would put three on, five on, there we go. And then we're gonna put the medium size. We're gonna add a little more sparkle, spread it around. I'm gonna put one up here. Ta-da, like that. Okay, front of our card is done. The inside we already stamped. Put that in there. The inside we stamped earlier. All I have to do is layer that up. Here we go. Three sides. Wiggle it around, get it centered here. There we go. And put it inside and we're done with the first card already. Woohoo! That was fast, right? Not so bad, even with the fussy cutting. But it simplified it by, um, of course, having everything cut and ready to go, but also um, I only used one ink, so you're not opening a lot of different inks. There's no coloring. It's just stamping and cutting and going, so pretty fast. So first one done. Yay! Let's move along here to the next card. Put this all down here. Okay, the next one has a little more fussy stuff in it. Not bad, but a little bit more. So here is my... The stamp set we're using is Basket of Blooms, and I'm using the words from Here's a Card. I love this set because it kind of covers a lot of different things. Um, very versatile word set. I collect word sets. Love that. I, maybe that's because I talk a lot. I don't know, but could be. Okay, here we go. And this was the surprise when we did this in class. This, uh, I did everything in red, white, and blue. I have two cards that I must have been feeling patriotic this day. Um, this is actually Christmas paper. So don't just keep Christmas paper for Christmas because you can use it on anything. I thought this one was really pretty. I love the little uh, pattern, the little dots on it. So I thought that was lovely. I'm going to stamp first. So this card is um, Night of Navy and Real Red. And I'm going to stamp my images first. So on my little basket, um, before I have a, the basket on here, I have words way down. I'll show you the card real quick. See this? That's the card. So I have these words way down on the bottom. And because that's kind of fussy, it needed to be there to fit all my basket in here, I stamped the, the words first. So those are stamped in Memento. So I'm going to, and then I'm just going to line this up again. I use my grid all the time. <clears throat> and what I do is I kind of look at the bottom of side of my stamp and I can see that the words are actually pretty close to that edge. So when I'm deciding where this should go on the card, that's what I'm thinking of. If you're looking at this, they look like they're up a little bit further, but actually check how your stamp uh, image is cut and for, um, for positioning that. So I'm gonna put it right there. Knock on wood, people. Ah, oh, yay! It's like I've done this before. It worked. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to stamp my basket, and we're using Memento because I'm going to use the blends to color in my uh, my little basket and my flowers here. So I'm just going to make sure this gets stamped real good here. A little ink. Okay, and I'm just centering this basket on here. It's kind of a tight fit from edge to edge. I didn't want it too big because I wanted my designer paper to show around my image because it's so pretty. So we wanted that to show. Now, I have little um, leaves coming out of here, but to make sure that I could position them as I wanted, I took a post-it note and I'm putting the post-it note, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see, like right on the bottom side of the line for the top of the basket so that you see that um, part of the basket image is stamped right there. If you put it above and some of that shows, you'll have like a little line because you're going over a lip here. 
And so that's why I moved it. When you're masking, we've talked about that. You want to move that down. So I'm going to ink this up good, and I'm just going to put my little leaves on here. These are all going to get colored in, and then we're going to have flowers over them. So I went edge to edge, and then I'm kind of fitting this one in. So if it overlaps, that's okay. Just like that. Okay. Clean off my stamp, put it back in. That's going to be all for this image, and then we'll color it. But I also need my little flowers. So if during celebration you, re you could have received this flower punch for free, it is available. You can purchase it um, in the annual catalog. But um, if you participated in celebration, this is the one that you would have received free. This particular stamp set has two little flowers that match this punch. So I have three flowers on the outside and I have one flower and the inside so we're gonna do do it different and what I do is when I'm stamping these I'm making sure that I have one petal up because when I turn this around to punch it it will mimic my punch so it makes it a lot easier than kind of uh, looking to see where you're going right you want to have your stamp matching your punch when you turn it over to punch it so I'm gonna take that off, and as long as I'm stamping, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the inside. That way my ink can dry. If, if I have a little more ink on one side or whatever, um, that can get good and dry before I start coloring everything in. So I'm just gonna get that all done out of the way. Um, I did put a little flower with a leaf, a 3D flower, the punched out one with a little leaf down here in the corner, because it looks pretty. And uh, this is a birthday card, so I have the nice little happy birthday. Put that right there. Ta-da! Okay. With all that done and said, we're going to color, punch, and uh, get everything put together. So, I started out, before I punch, I like to color. I like to color everything in before... I punch it out uh, then I'm not chasing this tiny little flower around the place so I'm just gonna color them all I didn't do any shading I color around the edge go around the edge and then fill in the center of each petal I find that goes faster that way and I'm not even worried I did hit the center of this I'm not too worried about hitting the center of this flower because I'm going to put a rhinestone over all of the flowers, give it a little sparkle. I think the paper, that designer paper that I put on the red, looks like it's kind of sparkly. I mean, it has the little little lines on it that give it a little sparkle, a little movement, and I think this kind of mimics that to have rhinestones put on here. So here we go, almost done with these. And we'll punch those off and have them off to the side for when we put our card together. See how fast that goes? You don't have to spend a lot of time, you know, like, I think sometimes we get so uh, caught up in like, don't go out of the lines. It's okay. Uh, you can go a little bit faster, especially if you're making a lot of cards. I have a lot of ladies that come here that do cards for a number of ladies that do cards for their church. When you're making a ton of cards, you have to figure out a way to make that go a little smoother for yourself. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to turn the punch around and punch out my little flowers here. And then I'll just set those off to the side. And here we go. Boink. You got to catch them. <laughs> it's like fishing. Here we go. There we go. One more, and I'll set that off to the side. There, ta-da. Done with my punching. So now I'm going to color in the basket and the, um, the leaves. So I'll tell you what I did on the basket. I'm using um, the Knight of Navy, because that's the base, right? A light and dark Knight of Navy. So on this basket, I went over it. Do I have that straight? That's kind of straight, I guess. I went over it pretty quick. So I didn't, I didn't want everything, I didn't want a solid color. Um, so when I'm going through this, I'm just kind of 
hitting hit and miss and so it gives it more depth and interest I think than just a solid you know when you're just coloring it in solid so I purposefully did not have it everywhere so I went over with the light and now I'm going to go over with the pointy tip uh, where the basket kind of comes together and I'm just coloring in those little uh, pieces there we go I never did basket making did anybody I think I might have tried one once it was too hard June I know you do did that basket making it's a lot of work I give you guys credit I love baskets I have a lot of baskets here but um, I have not made one myself this is the this is the most I'm gonna be doing for basket making <laughs> there we go so my basket is done not colored in solid so that it gives it a little more interest. I'm using my shaded spruce blend here in the dark um, shade. Because this card is fast and it's a lot of these are going to be covered with the flowers, I didn't worry about doing any shading today. So that, that makes it a lot faster, right? So again, just like the flowers, I kind of go up the stem of the leaf, go around the outside, and then color in the center. It goes pretty quick that way I keep moving it around sorry I know I move this um, base around here a lot I don't mean to do that I just I it just happens here we go I am so excited about the uh, the new embossing machine that you guys can get today don't forget I have I have a number of um, people who bought one already this morning I put in one order so if you're interested, if you want me to place the order for you, just let me know. You can go to stampingjourney.com. Um, you can send it to Share Quilt. On Stamping Journey, it has my email address. You can send me information on Share Quilt. Okay, so that's done. I am going to go ahead and get the inside put away, which is this Night of Navy layer. Because the only thing I have to do on the inside is add my little flower. And then I'll be all set. That part will be done. Just gluing it on quickly. There. I'm doing four cards today. So um, in a class, you would come to class and you would be here from either 9 to noon or 3 to 6 or whenever because I never kick anybody out. But, <laughs> but um, so you would take your time. You would uh, talk with people. Just have a good time. We, we have a nice community of stampers here. So you can bump things up, right? You can use dimensionals on the inside too. It just makes it kind of fun. There we go. And then I'm going to put a uh, rhinestone on the inside also. We have these all cut up and ready to go here. There we go. Pop that up. Put it in the center of my flower. So pretty. So pretty. Okay. Get rid of this layer. And then we'll work on the front. So on the front, I also have a bow. The bows are all um, pre-tied uh, because I can teach you how to make a bow. I use a bow maker. We can teach you how to make a bow. But I'm telling you, um, sometimes making that bow is so stressful for people <laughs> that we're here to stamp and have fun. If something brings you stress, we're going to try to alleviate that issue. And so you're not stressed out, right? <laughs> So now I'm going to take my designer paper, my Christmas designer paper that I'm using on a floral card and put that on. It's so vibrant. I love, I love this paper. It just looks happy. My image here for my basket is going to go on another layer of Night of Navy. And these are just cut. I didn't use a I didn't die cut them or anything. I just cut them out here. There we go, like that. Okay, this layer is going to go right directly onto the card front. The card, yeah, the card base here. Move that over. Okay, put this on. Ta da, ta da. There. Now, I know I added inside and I am adding bulk on the outside. You may have to add an additional stamp or have this one of the, be one of those cards you just hand to people, right? But it's worth it. 
because it looks so pretty. So there we go. Let's put take these off. I'm going to put that right on the front of the card. And I centered, how I decided where to put it on the card is that I wanted you to see a lot of this designer paper because I think it's so pretty. So I went and put it up on the top. And what I'm looking at is getting evil, ev evil. Oh boy, that's really bad. That was a slip. Um, I am getting uh, even sides, trying to. And it's kind of nice because when you have a paper that has some print like this, you can kind of line up your print and know that you're straight. So there we go. Now my little flowers are gonna go on here. I'm going to put dimensionals on those. So today I'm using the regular size dimensionals, but remember we do have small ones um, also, which are really handy on some of these smaller projects. And I'm gonna put my flowers here, just kind of random where they're going. And one more up here, ta-da, and then they will have a rhinestone in each of them, little sparkle here, little sparkle, sparkle, there we go, and here's my bow, so I use this fun, so see in class this is what you get, the bows are all cut, they're in the bag, and we're using glue dots to put the bow on. So I have it all tied and ready to go. I didn't do it, my monkeys did it. They have it all tied and ready to go. And on this one, I decided I would use, um, I wanted to make sure this stays. So I'm using two um, glue dots. So I put it on one and I'm just putting it right over the top of another one, pulling that up and then, whoops. It's like I'm driving the car here. And put this right at the base of my, ta-da, there we go. Another card done, lickety split. That was fast, wasn't it? There we go, second card is done. So let me put that off to the side. We'll grab another card, put this here. Okay, now the next card I'm using, and I've used this before, I love this set, Field Journal. All these different little, you know, I mean, it's like grapes, or they could, whatever color you color them, that, that changes into something else. This is a little ladybug. Here's my chipmunk. Here's my, we've done another one with the mallard, and then a nice floral. So that's the set that I'm using for this one. And with this one, I used... Um, my DSP is the Forever Greenery DSP, which I just love. So here it is. Everything is cut and ready, just like that. So these are going to layer up. I have two pieces, um, and they look, uh, when you visually see this, it looks like this bottom, this is the card we're going to do. It looks like this bottom piece is a little bit bigger, but actually these are exactly the same size. It's sort of an optical illusion. So I'm just kind of layering out, laying out my pieces so I know what goes where. This designer paper is going to get glued right onto this base. Again, see I'm using my favorite color, the shaded spruce, along with, um, this is the, let's see here, I think that this one is the soft sea foam. So nice color combination. I'm going to glue this on here just to get these pieces out of the way. Line that up, use my green glue, and I'm just checking out the three sides, trying to make them as even as I can. All right, and then this on the bottom, I love this pattern, very simple, but that's where the sea, uh, the sea foam spray color came in. I pushed it down here, and in this spot in the middle, is where our ribbon's going to go. So I use the Magenta Madness. So I have a, a pop of bright color in this card. The flowers are this color, and then the ribbon kind of ties it together. I love pink and green. That's one of my favorite combinations. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this on. It's gonna go way off to the side here. Get that out of my way. Now let's hope this 
this works for me. You know, sometimes, sometimes it works when I'm online and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Depends <clears throat> how I'm doing here. Let's see here. Come on. I have a little bit of issue with numbness in my fingers. It could be from tying 10,000 bows, but um, I'm not sure. So here we go. I have it. I'm pulling it there. Ta-da. So <clears throat> this is one of the things that we talked about before. If you bend your cardstock, you can put your bow wherever you want. So just keep that in mind. If you, if you have it and it's not quite where you want it, not quite far enough over, you just bend your cardstock and pull your ribbon and you can put it wherever you want. So now I have this one here. I'm going to cut off some of these tails because they're pretty long. There we go. A little snip snip here, snip snip there. There we go. Okay. Get rid of that. <clears throat> okay. One of these little papers is going to have my chipmunk in it. And we are going to use blends, so I'm using Memento ink again. So here's my little chippy. My dog loves to chase the chipmunks. Luckily, the chipmunks are faster than the dog. So we haven't had any issue. So I'm just going to put my little guy on here. Ta-da! And then I made this into a thank you card. So on this set, they have this nice tiny little thank you, which is just perfect to put up in the corner here. Make sure I ink it up good. And I'm just going to put it right in the corner. Ta-da! Like that. Okay. Now my floral piece is bigger and I want to uh, get as much of this on as I can. So I put it, stamped it on here at an angle. So here we go. I'm going to put this way up in the corner. There we go. Ta-da. And then I'm also going to stamp this on the inside. So here we go. Move that over. Put this in. I'm going to ink this up. Okay. I have it good? Okay. Yep. I didn't want the roots on there, so I moved it over a little bit. I want it over to the side in case you want to leave a little message on there. Ta-da. And then on the inside, this has a very nice little message that says, um, a little kindness makes a big difference. So I'm going to stamp this in the center up here. Please be straight. Good enough. I think it's okay. All right. Let's cover this up. I can hear you guys a lot. <laughs> I'm going to cover that up, and then I'm going to pull my colors in here. <laughs> here we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this on top. I'm going to just glue this on. Here we go. A little glue along my ribbon. Get that inside out. Move that layer over for a minute. Put this here. There we go. Okay. Ta-da, ta-da. Down, down, down. <laughs> there. All right, that's okay. I'm going to start out with my um, Magenta Madness. So this is one of the new in colors. So I have a light and dark Magenta Madness. And that's my pop of pink. Pink and green. Love that. So I know I have, I'm going to color my flowers in. I did the, um, the light pink first. So again, kind of quickly, not going to spend a whole lot of time. I'm just getting in it. This is a like a uh, sketch, you know, so it, the lines aren't real definite. They're just sort of, uh, you know, I have multiple lines on here, and I think that's a, a neat look, and I think it's nicer for us when we're coloring that in. You know, you don't need to color every little, every little piece. You know, if there's a little white in there, that's okay. And then I'm going to go with my dark, and I'm just going to add where Stampin' Up! has given us some shading. I'm going to put it in the center, and just a little bit of lines here to give it some depth. There we go. Okay. This one in the center, a little bit of lines in there. Okay. Shaded spruce. This time I am sh um, shading uh, the other one. Remember, I just used the dark shaded spruce on the floral basket. But on this one, I generally start with my lighter color. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going with my light shaded spruce and just coloring in 
my leaves and my stem and I'm going to be going over this with the dark also and doing a little shading so I'm not going to worry about if I don't have every little tiny bit colored in because it's a sketch. It doesn't have to. It gives it a little interest. You don't have to worry about that. And some of this will be covered with my image of my little chippy. So there we go. But I want to color that most of it in here. And I'm using the pointy end instead of the paintbrush end. And let's get this one done real quick. Like a little mirror image here. I love, um, I think this flower is pretty. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, but the leaves are interesting. Flower is pretty, it could be any color. We went with bright and cheery and happy with that magenta. Such a pretty color, bright. There we go. And then I will go over it with my dark where they already gave us the shading lines really fast. So here we go. I'm just going to go over it. These areas where the lines are, a little bit here and there. I'm going pretty fast, but you can see that it gives it a little bit more interest and dimension, right? To add a little bit here and there to that. This one too just makes my leaf come kind of come alive a little bit more. There we go. There. Okay. Ta-da. Inside is done. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. We're going to put that on this layer. There we go. Ta-da, ta-da. Yay, green glue. And put this on. Give me a little wiggle there. Make sure I get it as straight as I can. Push it. There we go. I'm going to put this in the inside of the card. And we are like over 50% done. Ta-da, ta-da. It is good to stamp with you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I am so excited. Now, you know I can't uh, see you <laughs> when I'm the camera's turned around so I can't see you. Um, but I know you're there. Let me know that you're there. I can see the numbers when I stand up and I can respond to you, uh, YouTube or Facebook live when I go back and look. So please let me know that you're here. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something else you'd like to see. I, I am here for you. I want, I want to do what you guys want to see. So now we're going to color in my little chipmunk and I will tell you the truth. I did email or email. I did pull up and Google chipmunks. <laughs> just to see if I could get it close enough. So I am using my light and dark soft suede and I'm gonna go fast, so I'm using the paintbrush end. So I went with this first, my um, light soft suede. And according to the pictures, some of this was white around our little chippy. <laughs> so he has a white stripe on his back. And there we go, like that there and then I used my dark um, soft suede to do the shading so where there's some little lines I kind of went over it and added some shading here over just where they said now um, on this particular one I did go back with my light and go over it again just to blend those lines so it's not such a definite line here. There we go. Because I wanted it kind of to blend a little bit more. He has a nut in his hand, so I'm going to color that in with the dark soft suede. And then I used a light crumb cake for the ground. So just a little swish in here, uh, getting where they already showed me uh, some of it there. Just like that, very simple. I'm gonna put him on this uh, shaded spruce. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. There we go. And my last card that I'm gonna be doing is um, is with the senior years again. And my favorite, the, the plaid paper, the plaid tidings, I love that stuff. Okay, on this one, uh, the back layer, 
is just glued down and I did cattywampus so Miss Vi if you're watching Vi does a lot of things cattywampus kind of off um, at an angle so I was thinking about her when I was designing this card and here we go this one is going to be popped up on dimensionals our little chippy because he is the focus of the card right a nice thank you there put one in the middle pull off the little coverings here there we go I I woke up this morning I was gonna do a different card I wanted to do a floral card with fall colors because I I got new color yesterday and it's sort of a fall color but but I decided this would be more fun. <laughs> so this one too, I have just kind of at an angle, going opposite, ta-da, there you go. There's our little thank you card, little pop of color in there. So love that, you could do whatever colors you want, but I thought, I love that magenta madness. Okay, last card uses senior years and that's this one here we've done another we did her remember we I did her in uh, blonde and I did her with gray hair I've done her in a, a number of different I guess whatever age she's at right so here is the packet and um, this one we're using my um, I gotta put this piece over here we're using uh, the plaid tidings paper and this is my other red white and blue card I don't know I just uh, something happened that day and things went right red white and blue for me so that's what I used <laughs> now on this one this particular set you could do it as a happy birthday I did it as a happy retirement so it gives you that option um, we're going to do retirement today and I'm going to go ahead and stamp my man because I'm going to be coloring him in so I'm stamping him with memento and here he is Get, make sure he's inked up really well there and this is kind of a tight fit also I didn't I wanted it um, I wanted it that way so that let's see here you would see more of the paper that's behind him and the this um, <laughs> this plaid is what inspired his pants because we're gonna kind of color his pants with the same color as that is the plaid there the words on this one the verses that I did I stamped in Knight of Navy so I'm gonna pull that over here clean my stamp off put it away um, let him dry a minute and to put the words on it was they have to be placed just so so here I used my um, plaid tidings and I'm gonna put it on the Knight of Navy first. And I went, um, usually when you're layering up, you know, you have a little bit of a layer um, all, all the way around it. On this particular card, I didn't. I went all the way to the end on here because the base, uh, the base of the card is Knight of Navy and then the layering is real red. And so I knew that that was gonna have red around it. So I didn't need, I just wanted red around this portion of it so it went all the way to the edge is what I'm saying a lot of times it's cut short there but I needed that full um, I wanted that full look of the plaid paper here so again I'm just layering this up like this watching the end to get it um, there okay so there's my piece all layered up now this piece is going to go on here about right here so what I'm doing is I'm layering I'm putting my cardstock along this line on my grid paper and then to make sure that I have this square on here instead of just following it side to side I'm like layering it up with um, lining it up with the lines here on the grid paper to make sure that's and before I glue that on it, adhere that on I'm gonna stamp my words because you know why <laughs> because I know what happens when I don't stamp them right then I can flip the paper around so there is a method to my madness here 
So we are going to stamp on the top of this little image. It's going to say retirement has its ups and downs. And I'm just gonna stamp that very close to the edge and right above my red layer here. Ta-da. There we go. And then down below here, it's gonna say you get up and you lie down whenever you want. Get it? It's, it's kind of cute. So this is going to go in the center. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Now, did I get that one straight? I can't tell when I'm not leaning over. It's not. So, okay, there you go. Case in point, people. If it's not straight, turn it over. Start over. We have special double-sided paper. Yay, Stampin' Up! Thank you that you gave us a nice, hearty white cardstock, whisper white cardstock that I can do that with. All right, I'm going to start over. I'm going to do that again because I didn't get that straight. So I'm going to lean over this a little bit more. Hope I don't get my head in the in the way here. And hope I get it straight, please. Okay, that's better, I think. Is that better? Yes, okay. All right, I'm good with that. Woo, the pressure. Okay, here we go. This one is gonna go here. Ta-da, ta-da. All right, now I'm gonna let that dry. And then in the inside, it just says, happy retirement. Happy retirement. Let me find that one. Happy birthday. Happy retirement. Here we go. And just stamped it. I stamped it up far enough that, you know, like up above, you can say, you know, a little message to your two, and you have room on there to, to write a little bit more. So we'll let those dry. And then we're going to, do a little coloring with our blends here on our little gentleman. Move that to the side. Here's our guy. We're going to focus on him. So like I told you, I used, I used this plaid as inspiration because his pants are plaid. So I used um, a lot of colors here. It looks like a lot of colors, but it's not. Not too bad. So on his pants, I used the Knight of Navy. So um, actually, this is what I did. I used... The Dark Knight of Navy for the stripe, for the lines, and the light um, seaside spray, because that matches inside here. So it doesn't have to be the same color, right? Use The blends can be used uh, differently. So here's my seaside spray, light, it matches my pretty plaid paper here. <laughs> so I'm just kind of going over. And I didn't do shading on this guy. I just did the lines here. And then I'm going to use the pointy end, and then I'm going to get do my dark lines on his pants. I'm just following their lines that they gave me already. There we go. And I know, see, I have to turn it or I can't, or I can't do it. <laughs> there. Down his leg. There we go. And guess what? He has blue suede shoes. We uh, we listen to a lot of Elvis here. <laughs> I don't have it on right now, but we uh, we listen to a lot of Elvis on my Pandora. And this guy is cool, dude. He has blue suede shoes on. There we go. Now his jacket. I had to get the red in here, so I have red. I am using let's see here the dark real red blend. For his jacket and again like I do all those other things I tend to outline it and then color in the center I'm going to go around the buttons because I want those a different color so I just go around the edge and then I can do a quick swipe of the center so just like that like that there we go let's go around this edge there we go doop 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 does he look cool? He just come, kind of pops out and comes comes alive. So I did use, um, let's see here, I used the dark gray for his eyebrows <laughs> and his belt. 
there. I'm going to use that again on his hair, but I'm just going to leave that now because I was finishing up the belt. And I'm using uh, the dark soft suede for his buckle. I thought it looked sort of gold. There we go. He is one cool guy. Of course, for his skin, I'm using ivory. So I'm going to color that in like that around his eyebrows, his little face, his chin. He's kind of got a square jaw here. There we go. And his ear. And don't forget his hands. There we go. Okay. So for his hair, like we did one of the other people, I used the light smoky slate. And just kind of went around here. Got his hair colored in. And then I took, let's see here, the dark smoky slate and went around the edges it just gives it a little more of a 3d look there we go and I use that on his buttons also there now he's a little shy and he's blushing so I used my light flirty flamingo just to do a little bit of cheeks here yes then we can use a little on his chin there ta-da not on his nose, that would be nice. Okay, so our man is all done. We're gonna layer him up on Knight of Navy. Ta-da, ta-da. So remember, if you are interested in getting a packet to make these cards, um, if you have the stamp sets, that's great. If you need the stamp sets, I'd be happy to get those ordered for you. Um, but if you want the packet, it would be the four cards cut and ready to go. We cannot pre-stamp, so they're not pre-stamped for $15 and a $3.95 for shipping if it has to be shipped to you. And then you can make these cards up, come back, watch the video. Um, I tell you all the colors and what I'm using. And you can do the video and have fun. So you could make these up at home. Or, you know, if you have different stamp sets that would go with the cardstock because it's going to come cut as it as I show it here. Um, if you have something else that would work, that's fine. So let me know. You have until Friday. So I will be on, um, on follow-up Friday. And so I need to know by Friday whether you're interested in receiving a packet to make these cards up. Let me know. There we go. Okay, now this layer is going to go on my real red. Make sure I get the right one here. One was a little crooked, so I had to start over. It happens. It happens. There we go. But thank goodness that our Stampin' Up! Whisper White is nice and thick, so you can do that kind of stuff. Um, before I tie this, I'm going to, before I glue that down, this has... Um, the Misty Moonlight ribbon on here. So I'm going to tie this on, this layer. Let me pull that over. I can tie it anywhere and move it. Remember how we did that? You just bend your cardstock. I'm trying to hold that tight down here. Wrap this around. Come on, mister. Work with me. Work with me here. And I do, um, the, the ribbon is included and the rhinestones are included. All that good stuff is included in your packet. Okay, now I'm going to move this around. And I think uh, I have the ribbon cut <clears throat> generous enough that, you know, you shouldn't have difficulty getting it tied on there. So I'm going to cut my tag, my little wings here, my little, whoop, there we go. There we go. Ta-da. Get those out of the way. This piece is just going to get glued down on my base here. Little glue right on the ribbon. And again, I'm going to line it up. I'm looking at the grid paper here on the top. So I, I'm going to go up a little bit more here. There we go. And ta da! There we go. Move it over. Wiggle, wiggle. I have wiggle room here. There. Okay. 
My little man is the focus, so he is popped up on dimensionals. Put those on here. And I think I'm gonna put a little extra on, on the sides just to make sure our gentleman stays where he's put. Hold these backing off. Whoops, come on now. See Daisy? Okay. And he's gonna go on just like this. So I see a nice portion of the um, a nice portion of the DSP here. Whoa! Holy cow, he went flying. Okay, we're gonna glue him on. Ta-da ta-da. There we go. Oh, lovely. All done. So, we did four cards. And, let me show you. So, if you are interested in receiving the packets to make these four cards, let me know by Friday. There's our two red, white, and blue ones. It's just feeling a little patriotic today. There we go. There's our four cards. I, I guess greens and blues, huh? Red, white, and blue and, and our greens. This one with pink, this one with the Packer colors. So yay, Wisconsin. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's see here. Here we go. I get to see the ceiling. Woo, and then it's me. Hello, Linda. I hope you guys liked it. Okay, that's it. So if you're interested in the packet, let me know by Friday. $15, $3.95 shipping if I have to ship it to you. You will get everything cut and ready. Um, come back and watch the video at any time. It will give you instructions on what colors I used and uh, what inks I used. And don't forget, today you, are avail you can purchase the uh, embossing cutting machine. Yay! All right, y'all have a great week. I'll see you on Follow-Up Friday. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.